Hi, I'm Kirby Allison. Thank you for all your comments and questions that you guys have posted on our YouTube channel. After reading them all and answering as many as possible, I've selected five that we're going to feature in today's Q&A video. Each of these individuals I have selected will receive a complimentary pair of our Sovereign Grade shoelaces as a token of our appreciation for their participation in our channel. In today's Q&A video, we're going to be answering questions about closet organization. Question number one today is from GKC Booth on our closet tour video, and it reads, Very nice. I'm also in the Dallas area. Please tell me who you used for your closet system. Also, the picture of you and your mother would look great in the living room. Best wishes. So great question. Uh, you know, the guy that we found to do our closets was actually referred to us, and uh, his website is closetorganizingsystems.com. His name's Marciano, a great guy, uh, and he was able to come in and do our closets, you know, really for, for a shockingly uh, little amount of money. And so it really kind of opened up my eyes. I mean, for the longest time, I thought having a custom closet was going to be incredibly cost prohibitive. I mean, I've worked a little bit with California closets just with our hangers, and, you know, some of their closets, you know, the start at eight, ten, twelve thousand dollars and so we were able to get ours done both my wife and my closet you know for as little as a, a few grand and so what's really important and what helps drive that price down is the fact that Marciano at closetorganizingsystems.com isn't using solid wood he's using a, a highly compressed particle board uh, with a melanin finish uh, which you know is perfectly suitable if what you're looking for is the functionality of a, a, a built closet now, if you really want the high-end finish or you're looking for all the details, and yes, I mean, the same closet done in a beautiful wood by a carpenter uh, would without question be more beautiful uh, than something done uh, with a melanin product. But if you have a small closet, if you have a small space and you're really looking to get as much out of that space as possible, you can get 100% of the uh, pragmatic functionality of a custom-built uh, closet for as much as you know, 10 to 20% of what you would pay to have something done uh, out of a solid wood. So I called Marciano for this uh, for this video, and he said that you know he travels kind of regionally. So if you're in Texas or if you're in Oklahoma or someplace close to Dallas, you know he'd be more than happy to drive out to install that. Uh, but if you're not located someplace that he would be able to uh, do the job, uh, again, what you want to call and ask for is uh, finding a closet uh, organizer or a closet specialist that is able to use a highly compressed particle board with a melanin finish. Regarding the picture of my mother, you know, thank you for noticing that. Uh, my late mother, you know, she passed away really just weeks after Bianca and I got married. A beautiful woman, uh, so special to me. And I actually enjoy having that photograph in my closet because it guarantees that I'm going to see her twice a day, you know, in the beginning of the morning and at the end of the day. So, of course, you know, we've got photographs of her located uh, throughout the house, but that particular photo is really special for me, and that's why I keep it in my closet. So if you're interested to see, you know, what a closet uh, system can do for a closet, you know, take a look at the video that we did uh, that's a tour of my closet. I mean, I've got a tiny shoebox of a closet that I share with my son, uh, and I'm able to fit my entire wardrobe into that thanks to my closet system. Our second question today is from SJ Video uh, on uh, the unboxing video of my George Cleverly Bespoke Baron de Reedies. It reads, beautiful box. Uh, do you ever yourself or recommend storing your shoes in such high-end boxes? Uh, so great question. So since I have this custom closet, uh, I, I actually prefer to just leave my shoes on my shelves uh, and I actually designed a section of my shelves especially to accommodate my shoes. Now, if you don't have much closet space or you don't have a closet system, uh, then absolutely storing your shoes uh, in your boxes, you can stack them on your floors, you can put them at the top of your closet, uh, is actually a really nice way to store shoes and a lot of gentlemen uh, choose to do so this way. Now, the benefit of uh, storing your shoes in boxes is it prevents them from accumulating dust and then also prevents any type of, you know, random damage, you know, something falls on them and might, you know, scratch the leather or you step on them accidentally or if you have a dog you know that loves uh, leather shoes comes in and chews up a pair you know of your Allen Edmonds uh, storing them in a box of course will uh, protect them from that 
Here at, at Kirby Allison Tanger Project, you don't have to go buy a bespoke pair of shoes to get a really nice shoe box. Uh, we actually had shoe boxes designed and made specifically for this purpose that are made out of a really high quality, thick and stiff. It's a very rigid cardboard. We have them hand wrapped out of a beautiful black linen paper. And most importantly is we have a nice little file card holder put on the front of the boxes so that whenever you have all of your boxes stacked up, you can write on a piece of paper and drop that in there, uh, what pair of shoes that is. I've even seen some people put in a little Polaroid photograph in there. And so it'll allow you to stack your shoes or put them up at the top of your closet and know exactly what's inside that box without having to open it up. And I actually use that for several pairs of shoes uh, that I don't wear very often. I've got you know my grandfather's crocodile uh, Oxfords that are very special to me and I don't wear very often. I normally keep those boxed. Uh, my opera pumps, which I might wear you know two or three times a year again, I keep those boxed and at the top of my closet and one of our Hanger Project shoe boxes. Our third question today is from Mr. Milana, and it reads, uh, you display the backside or counter of your shoes instead of the front. Uh, is there a purpose to that? So uh, in my closet tour video, uh, you can see that I actually put my shoes in toe first, uh, and what you can see when you're in the closet is the back heel. Now, uh, I guess the idea of turning them around is it would be more beautiful, you could see the shoe, and I absolutely understand uh, the virtues and the benefits of that. And maybe if I had a slanted shelf, where I could put the shoes on there and re still reach out and grab them easily, I would do that. Uh, but honestly, uh, but the honest reason of why I put them in toe first is just it's easier for me to handle the shoes, put them in. You know, in the morning I can grab them out quite easily. And of course, I'm familiar enough with all my shoes that you know, even by just seeing the heel, I know exactly what shoe that is. I discuss all of this in my closet tour video where I invite you into my home into my closet and uh, everything in my closet is kept as it is for real. Uh, it's not like I took everything out and made some set. You know, I'm really walking you into my closet uh, with everything uh, kept as it is uh, day in, day out. So uh, take a look at that video. It's a really interesting uh, video where I, I really kind of talk about uh, a lot of the uh, reasons why I do things the way I do in my closet and how I store stuff. Uh, and I feel like it's a really good benchmark video because you know it's not like I have some huge extreme extravagant closet. I mean, like most of you probably, uh, I'm highly constrained uh, in my closet and confined to a small space. And so I've got to be as efficient with that as possible. Our fourth question today is from David uh, Holhauser, and it reads, I noticed you hang your ties instead of roll them. Do you have a discussion of that topic in any videos? Uh, I only have a small selection of ties uh, since at my workplace, I would be out of uh, place wearing a tie but I want to dress well just the same when the opportunity presents itself. Due to that, uh, I roll and box my ties. My dad always hung his ties and they became so stretched out over the years that I've avoid, avoided doing the same. Uh, so David, a great question. Uh, rolling your ties is an absolutely acceptable way to store ties. You know, if you don't have enough ties to justify buying a tie rack, uh, or uh, if you just don't have the room, uh, then absolutely rolling your ties. Um, you know, normally what I do is I'll fold them in half and then roll them up, you know, from the short uh, center of the tie towards the blade so that the blade's on the outside. Uh, is a perfectly acceptable way to store them. Uh, and so you could keep those uh, in a sock drawer or in a drawer, uh, or you could even uh, keep them in one of our sweater storage boxes or shoe boxes for that matter, uh, to ensure that they're uh, kept safe. Now, I hang my ties because I've got more of them and a lot of men do prefer to hang their ties uh, that have the space because it's just easier to see your full selection of ties and to access them. And as long as it's a high quality tie, I've never really heard of anyone having problems with their ties stretching. I mean, I suppose if they were hanging for 20 or 30 years, uh, that could be uh, a problem. Uh, but I've got uh, many of friends uh, with hundreds of ties uh, and I've never heard of that particular problem. So it's not one that I would worry too much about. Now that said, I do keep an air filter in my closet uh, to filter the air as much as possible so that they don't accumulate any type of dust. Uh, that would be the only potential problem I would see with hanging ties uh, versus uh, storing them in a drawer. 
If you're looking to hang your ties, we've got a beautiful cedar uh, tie rack. We call it our John Hall tie rack. It's named after an uncle of mine uh, who was actually the one that called me and said, Kirby, you know, you should carry a tie rack. So in honor of him, uh, I named it after him. Uh, but we also have some beautiful tie racks that we're having custom made uh, here in Dallas that are meant to be hung on a door or a wall. They're available in several sizes and several finishes and are absolutely beautiful if you have the space. Uh, David, I totally admire the, uh, your insistence on wearing a tie socially uh, whenever the occasion calls for it. And you know, in this day and age, whenever so many people are dressing casually, I find that whenever I go out to dinner with my wife and I insist on wearing a jacket and a tie, uh, even if every single other male at my dinner table is just wearing a collared shirt with no jacket, uh, or if I'm lucky, uh, a jacket with no tie, uh, I still find that I stand out, I feel better, uh, I look great, doesn't make anyone else uncomfortable, and it always results in me just being treated a little bit more nicely from the staff uh, of a new restaurant I'm at. And uh, you know, my wife and I have shown up kind of last minute uh, at a restaurant before, you know, dressed nicely, wearing a tie, uh, where we've uh, been given a table that we probably otherwise wouldn't have gotten had we just shown up in jeans, uh, sandals, uh, and no tie. Our last question today is from Jonathan Neal and it reads, do you recommend using your sweater hangers for V-neck sweaters or do you recommend folding them? So great question, Jonathan. Uh, you know, the sweater hanger I think is one of our more unique hangers we have here at the Hanger Project. And as far as I know, I mean, we essentially invented the sweater hanger. Now I wish I could claim credit. It was actually a customer that was calling and asking uh, whether or not we had anything that would allow him to hang his sweaters, you know, while they were in season. And so I went out and really worked with this idea and we invented or created, you know, what is our sweater and polo hanger. And so uh, this is a little bit larger of a hanger it's a beefier than a traditional shirt hanger, and it has flocked ends. Now this is important for several reasons, and that's because any type of soft knit sweater or polo is especially prone to stretching and disfiguration at the shoulders as it hangs in the closet. And that's because the weight of the shirt is pulling the shirt down, and inevitably the pressure points at the end of the shoulders where all of that weight is being uh, displaced uh, is going to deform and stretch. And that's what results in those terrible terrible shoulder mountains you see so often. Now in order to alleviate that problem, we did two things with our sweater hanger. First, we created a sweater hanger that has a slight contour and a 1.15 inch shoulder flare. What that ensures is that you have a larger than average surface area over which the weight of that sweater is being distributed. And second, and arguably uh, most importantly, is we flock the shoulders of the sweater. Now that is critical because basically the friction between the flocking on the shoulder of this hanger and the fabric basically locks the sweater onto the hanger and prevents it from sliding down. So it just ensures that this area is highly controlled. It's not gonna slide down the hanger and stretch at the shoulders. It's not gonna stretch the collar. It really does allow you to hang your sweaters or any type of knit polo in your closet while completely eliminating the risk of shoulder puckering. And I almost forgot, there's one last thing that is incredibly important, and that's the fact that we offer this in three different sizes. One size doesn't fit all whenever it comes to your clothing. The same should absolutely be true whenever it comes to your hangers. It's critical in order to properly support any garment that the width of the hanger is extending all the way to the edge of the shoulder so that the shoulder is fully supported. If it's too narrow, then you have the weight of the garment basically being pulled or totally pressed right here in the center of the shoulder, and that's what creates deformation. So our sweater hangers, of course, like all of our hangers, are available in multiple sizes. Now that said, I absolutely do not recommend storing uh, your sweaters all year round on a hanger because a sweater, even on the best hanger, will still stretch and deform. And that's why we have uh, our sweater and garment boxes uh, here at the Hanger Project, uh, where we actually had a really beautiful rigid box made so that you can fold your sweaters and store them out of season. Now personally, because I don't have much rod space in my closet, you can see in our closet tour video uh, that I still choose to store my sweaters folded uh, even in the winter time whenever I'm wearing them, and that's because I just don't have the space to hang them properly. 
Here at Kirby Allison's Hanger Project, we love to help the well-dressed take care of their wardrobes because we love to dress well. And if you can take care of your clothing, then you can afford to invest in higher quality items uh, that just help make you look better and that you enjoy more. The Hanger Project really started as a garment care company. I mean, we started with our hangers, and the first place we went after we added our hangers was into garment care. Uh, and so closet organization and garment care, we do that better than anyone else in the world. So before you go, I just want to review a few essential closet organization items that every closet should have uh, that we sell here at The Hanger Project. One of the first items that every closet should have that is one of the most overlooked is a proper natural bristle garment brush. And you'd be surprised with how hard it is to find a really high quality natural bristled garment brush. Everyone knows about Kent, you know, based in the UK, uh, you know, they it could have invented the garment brush, you know, for what most people know. Uh, but unfortunately, the quality of the Kent brushes have really uh, decreased dramatically over the years since I bought my first one in college. And it was really my disappointment out of that that drove me uh, to really go out and develop my own garment brush. It took me three years to find someone even to make one of these for us. Uh, and this is our Kirby Allison uh, double-sided garment brush. It's made 100% with natural pig bristle hair that allows it to really get into the fabric uh, and uh, you know, fluff that pile, get any type of uh, dirt uh, or dust that is settled actually into the fabric out. Uh, and it's just a great brush. It's got two different types of bristles, uh, or really it's the same bristle, but they're pinned differently in order to give it a different stiffness. The black bristle is a shorter cut length, and it's a much stiffer bristle that is appropriate for uh, worsted wools, uh, kind of hardier uh, fabrics, uh, denim and is great for really getting out dry stains. So like if you have a small dirt stain uh, or any type of dust that uh, has somehow gotten into your garment, you know, using this uh, can really get that out uh, quite effectively. The second is an offset pinned uh, pig bristle that allows a really long cut length. It's a much softer bristle and that's great for something like this cashmere jacket. Now, at the end of the night, it's a great idea to always brush, brush out your fabric because basically that allows the memory of the fabric to be restored before you're putting it away into your closet. It also allows you to take any type of dirt or any other uh, type of surface uh, contaminants off of the fabric to ensure that there's nothing on the garment that's attracting moths. A garment brush can easily extend the time between trips to the dry cleaner and every closet should have one. Uh, you buy one, a high quality one, and it'll be the last one you ever need to buy. Uh, and the other beauty of a natural bristled garment brush, unlike one of those lint rollers, is the lint rollers actually leave an adhesive residue uh, on the garment that can attract more dirt. And you're not gonna have that problem with the garment brush. The second item that everyone should at least have one of is one of our clamping trouser hangers. Now the reason the clamping trouser hanger is a closet organizing essential is because it's able to clamp trousers upside down by their cuff and hang them vertically. Now the reason that that's important and the reason I'm recommending that everyone should have at least one is that at the end of the day, uh, as you take your trousers off, you can clamp them upside down by the cuff and then hang them overnight and the weight of the trouser is actually gonna pull those creases out of the trousers and provide a soft press. It's an excellent way to just relieve the creasing. Uh, even if you have one, you know, you can just hang yesterday's trousers on your clamping trouser hanger on a hook or somewhere in your closet. And then, you know, the next day, whenever you're, you know, switching trousers again, you can take that pair, put it on your felted trouser bar, and then hang the next pair. Uh, in my closet, I actually prefer to use my clamping trouser hanger with all of my denim, uh, because of course denim is very prone to wrinkling. I'll use it for my linen also, uh, and it's just a great way to, again, pull those wrinkles out and keep your trousers looking fresh. Now, of course, no closet uh, is properly outfitted without proper hangers, and here at The Hanger Project, uh, that of course is our passion. Uh, and the reason is one size doesn't fit all whenever it comes to your clothing. The same should be true when it comes to your hangers. A properly sized hanger is just going to protect the integrity of the garment by providing the shoulder and the collar with the support that it requires in order to maintain its shape. Of course, we've spoken at length about hangers. Uh, you know, visit hangerproject.com or search some of our YouTube videos where we go into depth about the importance of a proper garment hanger. 
Now last but not least, of course, is a proper garment bag, and that's because we've all got out of season garments that need to be stored. And so if you're not rotating or using a garment often, and you allow it to just sit and languish in your closet, you're really making it susceptible to moths and the accumulation of dust and other type of damage. So any garment that's out of season or you're not wearing very frequently, like say, like a dinner jacket, uh, should always be stored in a garment bag. Now our garment bags here at The Hanger Project were one of the first items that I developed uh, once we launched our hangers. It's made from an incredibly high quality eight and a half ounce cotton twill. It's bulletproof. Uh, we don't have any large openings in the bag that would allow moss to easily enter. Uh, and it's just a fantastic bag for storage, uh, but it can also be a good bag for travel. I actually travel with my garment bags uh, because I can fit one or two garments in there. Uh, you know, I can actually fit multiple garments on a hanger. Sometimes I'll put two jackets jackets on one hanger uh, and then you know one or two hangers in a garment bag. It folds in half, it can fit over my suitcase and it allows me to travel without having to pack my jackets in my suitcase which is absolutely how I prefer to travel. If you have any questions about garment storage, you know, please uh, reach out to customer service uh, or ask any questions on this video. I enjoy getting back to as many of those questions as possible. Once again, I'd like to take a moment to thank everyone for their comments and questions. It's your engagement on our YouTube channel that make these Q&A videos possible. Not only do these Q&As give me an opportunity to answer in greater depth a lot of the questions that I'm already answering, but they allow me to take a moment to just acknowledge my appreciation for everyone's involvement in this channel. I've absolutely enjoyed this platform and how it's allowed me to connect more directly with all of you, and I really have fun interacting with you and answering your questions. If you haven't taken an opportunity to ask a question uh, or make a comment, I invite you to do so. Even if you don't have any questions to ask, just sharing your opinion or your thoughts about our content helps us make better videos, but also just makes us a better community. I read all those questions and comments personally and really do enjoy trying to get back to as many of them as I possibly can. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up and please subscribe to our channel and turn on your notifications by clicking the bell to the right of the subscribe button so that you can learn whenever we release new videos. If you have any questions or comments about anything we discussed on this video, please ask them in the comments section below. And of course, please visit hangerproject.com where we have the largest, most comprehensive collection of luxury garment care and shoe care accessories in the world, as well as many other incredible products for the well-dressed. And while you are there, subscribe to our newsletter to receive notifications of new product launches, promotions, as well as a weekly digest of all the videos we publish here on our YouTube channel. I'm Kirby Allison, and thanks for joining me.